Example 3. Determine the rate compounded quarterly that is equivalent to 15% compounded monthly. Once again, let's take a look at what we do know. We are told that we have a rate of 15% compounded monthly. That means that in one year's time, in one year, we will have a total of 12 months in of interest. So we've got 15% compounded monthly. That means that the interest rate is 15% divided by 12 interest periods per year, or 1.25% per month. This is what the rate of 15% compounded monthly boils down to. We want to find the rate compounded quarterly. Now the rate compounded quarterly means that in one year we will have a total of four quarters. Four quarters is the same as 12 months. So I can set up my equation for equivalent rates. I'm going to have in one year's time 1 plus 0, 1, 2, 5 per month for 12 months is going to be equal to 1 plus my rate per quarter compounded how many quarters in a year? There's four. So we've got 1.0125 to the power of 12 is equal to 1 plus my rate per quarter to the power of 4. I am now ready to solve this equation for i by eliminating that exponent of 4 above the parentheses. How do I eliminate that exponent of 4? I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So I'm going to use a power of 1 quarter. So raising the right side to the power of 1 quarter and the left side to the power of 1 quarter, I'm going to end up with 1.0125 to the power of 12 raised to the power of 1 quarter is equal to 1 plus i to the power of 1. Well, 12 times a quarter, we multiply the exponents on the left side. We'll end up with 12 times a quarter is equal to 3. So I'm going to have 1.0125 to the exponent 3 is equal to 1 plus i. Working this out on our calculators, of course, we'll have to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. So we'll end up with the interest rate i is equal to 0 0.03. 797 and a whole bunch of other stuff and then I have to remember how was the interest rate computed how often per year and we're looking at a rate of per quarter so this interest rate is per quarter in other words it's 3.797 percent per quarter so to get the nominal rate compounded uh, quarterly I'm going to multiply this by 4 because it's per quarter so therefore a nominal rate of Let's see, 15.19%, so 15.19% compounded quarterly is going to be equivalent to or is the same as 15% compounded monthly. Those two rates are the same. After any length of time, we will have the same amount of interest if the same amount of principal was invested. Example 4. A company can borrow development funds from one of two banks. The rates that are offered are from Bank A at 12.5% compounded monthly and from Bank B 12 and 3 quarters percent compounded semi-annually. We'd like you to compare the effective rates to determine which bank offers the lower rate. First of all, let's start with Bank A. Bank A is offering us a rate of 12.5% compounded monthly, so that would mean that there are 12 monthly periods in one year. In other words, to determine the effective rate that Bank A is charging us, we're going to take this rate per month, 12.5% divided by 12, and we're going to say it's 1 plus 0104166 repeating per month, raised to the power of 12, is equal to 1 plus the rate per year. Effective means per year, remember, and there will only be one interest period in one year. So we can determine the effective rate that is being charged by Bank A by raising the uh, compounding the monthly rate for 12 monthly periods over the one year period. And so what we'll end up doing is we'll solve this equation for I. I from Bank A is going to be equal to, works out to 13.24%. So 13.24% per year. So Bank A charges us an effective annual rate of 13.24%. 
And now, let's compare that to what Bank B is offering us at 12.75% compounded semi-annually. Well, semi-annually means that there are two semi-annual periods in a year, so 12.75% divided by two reduces to 6.375% per six months. And that is what Bank B is charging us, 6.375% every six months. Well, after a one-year period, we're looking at two semi-annual periods, so 1.06375 per six months compounded twice in one year will be equal to one plus the effective rate per year from Bank B compounded once. Effective means compounded annually. And of course, we're going to square the left-hand side of the equation and subtract 1 from both sides of the equation to solve for i. And we'll end up with a value for i that is equal to, i is going to be equal to 0 0.131564. And this is the rate per year from bank B. In other words, Bank B is charging us an effective annual rate of 13.1, we'll round that off to 13.16% uh, effective from Bank B. So putting it all together now, what's our conclusion? We can conclude that Bank A, which charges us 12.5% compounded monthly, is actually charging us an effective rate of 13.24%. Bank B, who is charging us 12.75% compounded semi-annually, it appears to be a higher rate, but in fact it, it isn't, because the effective rate that is equivalent to it is 13.16%. So in essence, what we can conclude is that Bank B is charging us a lower annual rate. We're going to borrow our money from Bank B. Example 5. Determine the rate compounded quarterly that yields the same return on a $10,000 investment that is currently invested at 10% compounded monthly. Let's examine the information that we know. We have an investment at 10% compounded monthly. So what we'll do is we, we happen to know that it's 10% compounded monthly. That means it's 10% divided by 12, 12 months in a year. And so we're looking at an interest rate of 0.00833 repeating per month. Now we're not told how long the money is invested. We are told that it is $10,000 invested today and frankly it really doesn't matter how long it's invested for and uh, it doesn't um, uh, it's it's quite irrelevant that, that it's an amount of ten thousand dollars as well because frankly um, all we really want to know is the equivalent interest rate that is compounded quarterly that is the same as ten percent compounded monthly so if we arbitrarily pick a one-year time period that is one year, and the monthly rate will have compounded 12 times, there's 12 months in one year, and at the equivalent rate, it will have compounded, if it's equivalent, it will be equivalent at a quarterly rate, so we're looking at four quarters. And for the two rates to be equivalent, the compound amount must be the same after that time period. So let's see what happens if we set up an equation of uh, compound amounts. So we will end up with $10,000 after one year, $10,000 inflated at 1.00833 repeating per month for 12 months. And that's equal to that same $10,000 multiplied by the compound interest factor of 1 plus i per quarter raised to the exponent 4 quarters. So we have an equation here and we're asked to solve for i. So let's see if we can do that. We'll divide both sides by $10,000 and this is going to be gone. So dividing both sides by $10,000 we'll end up with 1.00833 repeating to the exponent 12 is equal to 1 plus i to the exponent 4. So how do we solve for i? We're going to raise both sides to the power of 1 quarter because we want to 
uh, solve for the variable that's inside these parentheses, we need to eliminate the exponent of 4. So we'll use a power of 1 quarter on both sides. So we'll end up with a new equation that says 1.00833 repeating 12 over 4 is 3 raised to the exponent 3 is equal to 1 plus the interest rate per quarter. And carrying on from here, remembering that we have to solve for i by subtracting 1 from both sides of the equation, we'll end up with an equation that says that i is equal to 0 0.0 2520891. Now how is this rate calculated? It's per quarter, remember. So what that means is that in order to get the nominal rate compounded quarterly, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the number that's on our calculator display by 4. So we'll have a nominal rate of 10.08% compounded quarterly compounded quarterly which is equivalent to it is the same as 10% compounded monthly so we have a, an interest rate of 10.08% compounded quarterly that will be the same as 10% compounded monthly